Good morning and welcome to Monday Morning Mobility. My name is Jeff Blanchard and it is my privilege to bring you a little mentorship and training from a physical therapist perspective. So I have the best job in the world because every day through my coaching I get to see people improve their abilities and eliminate unnecessary pain from their lives. Now is a great time to share what I know by way of technology to teach you how to enjoy a better quality of life, get a better handle on some pain you might have at this time, and encourage you to choose activity over sedentary living. Uh, today's topic is ergonomics. So if you're like many people out there at this time, especially during the pandemic, you're working from home. And if you're working from home, you're probably working on a computer. So um, this can create a problem for our bodies and can increase pain. Uh, there are many patients that I see that work at a desk all day long and they come in with a certain set of problems and I can typically tell by looking at them that they have a desk job. So, um, so it's very important to take frequent breaks through your day and to change your body's position. The longer your body is in one position, the more likely your body will get eventually fixed in that position and you'll be stuck in that position. And I, what I tell my patients is if you spend a lot of time sitting in a chair, eventually your body starts to look like a chair and you stand up and you're kind of walking like this because you're looking like you're sitting in a chair. Okay, so <clears throat> with setting up your workspace at home or at work, there's a number of things you wanna make sure you're doing to try to take care of your body, especially your spine. Um, that is the most important thing that is, that is potentially gonna have a problem with sitting at a desk. So I, right now, I'm sitting in a chair that has multiple adjustments. And so um, one of the adjustments this chair has is the ability to deepen the seat or shorten the seat. So you want to make sure that whatever your chair sitting, you're sitting in at home, that you're sitting in your chair so your back is against the chair, the back of the chair. So you're in this position. Now a lot of people that I talk to, they sit in their chair like this and here they are and they're working at their desk sitting off of the chair, they're sitting on the edge of their chair. The problem with this, you might have good posture for the first five minutes, but after a little bit of time, you're gonna get more and more into this position and then you're doing, you're doing this thing and then over time, you're gonna have back pain and neck pain. So it's important that you can sit all the way in the back of your chair and so the seat pan is the right depth for you. And so what I tell patients is take about two to three fingers and insert it behind your calf and you wanna make sure that there's space between your calf and the edge of the chair and so there's enough of you sitting on the chair to help that force go into the chair. So this lever, this chair has the ability to scoot out the chair seat or to pull it back in to make it a shorter seat pan. So I'm going to actually, this seat pan is, is proper depth for my length leg. The other thing is the height of the chair. So you wanna make sure that the chair is proper height so that the up and down Okay, so I have pressure into my feet, but my knee should be just a little bit below my hip height. So there should be a very slight downward slope through my femur going from my hip to my knee. What that does is it takes my pelvis and it tilts my pelvis forward. And when my pelvis is tilted forward, I actually it gives me my lumbar curve. A healthy spine and a happy spine is gonna have the normal curves of the spine. And the lumbar curve here should go in. So then there's the chair back. So the back should be convex, this direction, not concave. I see a lot of chairs where they have concave backs and people are in this position here, which again is gonna make things a lot worse. And so you wanna scoot all the way in the back of the chair. You have a convex back that fills your back and that holds your back into this proper position. And so you can work in this position with a proper back position. If you look at my shoulder, my shoulder lines up directly over my hip. So as you're working, you want to have that shoulder hip alignment. What happens oftentimes is people start to cave in this direction and they're working here. So they've got their shoulder in front of their hip because their back has lost that natural curve and is actually curving into a C curve going in this direction. Then their head comes forward 
which then stresses out the neck. So you wanna have this straight position. The head should line up right over the shoulder, which should then be right over the hip, so you're here. <clears throat> so the chair is key in making sure that you're lining yourself up. And if you're home and you don't have a very good chair, we don't exactly know when we're all gonna be going back to work, I think it would be worth spending some money and making sure that you get your hands on a chair that has the adjustments. Um, there's also the, the back of the chair. There's the ability to adjust the chair back. Now, if you're too far back here, a lot of people will get the recline and then they'll work into this position here. Again, much harder on the spine to be in this position. So you want to be up. You want to have that back here. So it's propping you again in that vertical position here. So now with this desk, I want to be a little bit higher because you want your wrist just below your elbow height. You want a slight downward slope through your hands. Now, um, for me, my legs are a little bit short for this situation, so I would want to try to make sure that I have a keyboard tray that maybe can come out and it can adjust. That way I can drop the chair a little lower because right now my feet, are, my feet are touching the floor, but my heels are just barely off the floor. So for me, my chair is a little bit high. You really want to have your heels and your feet completely on the floor. So I'm having to make a little adjustment because this, the way this desk is, it won't go any lower than it is right now. So it's not the perfect situation for me. Um, this is an ergonomic keyboard. Uh, for me, not my favorite thing, but for some of those people who have hand and wrist pain, this is a good way to go if you have hand and wrist pain, carpal tunnel problems. So because it allows you to be more of a natural position, which is here versus a this position, which would be a standard keyboard position. And then you want to have your mouse right next to your keyboard. So the other thing is we want to make sure you're doing is that you're keeping your elbow by your side. So as you're working on the keyboard, oftentimes I'll find that people are working in this position here. They have their arms in front of their bodies. They're here and the mouse is over here. You can have especially neck issues, shoulder issues, um, uh, headaches. Those things are all gonna be made worse by this forward position through your arms. So you need to make sure that you can scoot into your, into your keyboard or bring your keyboard towards you if you have a keyboard tray. So you have your elbows by your sides and then you're in this more 90 degree angled position. So you can be here, there's your mouse, and so your mouse is not far away. So you can be here working on your computer. And then finally, you wanna make sure that your monitor is aligned and so your eyes line up with the top one third of the monitor. <clears throat> so it's very common for monitors to be too low, which will pull you down this direction and get you out of that natural position. So a high monitor and also you should be able to touch the monitor with your fingertips, with your back touching the chair. So this monitor is about a perfect distance for me. Um, if it's too far away, then again, you'll find yourself getting into this position, which again, rounds your back out, which we don't wanna do. We wanna keep your back in that nice neutral position. So that monitor close enough here where <clears throat> then you can see, you feel like, okay, that monitor is nice and close. Then your head kind of comes back and sits into this position. So you have that vertical alignment through your back. Um, so sitting through the day, it's important that you get regular breaks with sitting. I would suggest that you never sit longer than 30 minutes. More than 30 minutes of time, there, uh, there's a lot more stress on the discs of the spine, on the muscles of the body. And so it's important to at least every 30 minutes, get up and do something, get a, a drink of water, do a little stretch, do something different. Uh, one of the best stretches to do when you're sitting is to stand up and do a little bit of a backward bend. So if you stand up and just do a little bit of a backward bend like this, that takes your back into the opposite direction that you are sitting in, which is here, and that allows your discs, it takes pressure off of your discs, and it allows the, the back to feel better. Now, of course, don't do an exercise. If I show you an exercise and it's painful doing the exercise, don't do the exercise. Call us, come in and see us if you're having pain with certain exercises and we can help you navigate that. <clears throat> the last piece is if you are Lucky enough to have a sit to stand station.
This allows you to have best of both worlds. So every so often you're changing your the height of everything. So again, your keyboard is just gonna be just below your elbow height. Keyboard, mouse, looks like I need to bump my monitor up a little bit more. I'd wanna have my monitor right about there so I could stick a big book underneath my monitor. So I could see straight ahead, my monitor in this position, I'll start to get a little bit of a forward head position like this. So that would just be a nice, easy uh, change to make. But if this was my workstation, I could then stand and work for 15, 20, 30 minutes and then go back into sitting because you don't want to be standing all day either. Any prolonged position over time is just going to be more of a challenge for the body. So you do want to move your body and take, take, uh, make some changes. So thank you for joining me for this episode of Monday Morning Mobility. If you enjoyed today's episode or found it helpful in any way, please share it with a friend and uh, please leave me a review. If you have a topic that you would like to hear about, please leave it in the comments section. Until next time, choose movement over being sedentary because motion is lotion.